Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Now very quickly before we get started, uh, I just wanted to mention that a quick and easy way to support this channel is by subscribing if you have not done so already and by leaving a like or a comment, I would really appreciate it. Now let's jump into it. So for today's video, I want to pick up where we left off on uh, regarding the Lightning Web Components setup. So today I think uh, we should probably start uh, by setting up our dev hub, the a scratch org, and maybe the local server environment. Um, and this will allow us to basically uh, develop Lightning Web Components in our local environment uh, before we go ahead and you know deploy them into our production or sandbox environments. So uh, let's jump into it. The first thing we need to do is create a project. So click uh, on the keyboard, hitting shift control P will open up the command palette. And I'm simply going to click on this option right here, uh, create project. It might take a while uh, while it activates the extensions. Once that's done, uh, you'll see here we have an option to create either a standard MD or analytic, analytics type project. I'm going to go ahead and just select the standard and I will give it a name of for now, let's just call it a simple calculator. Uh, it's going to ask where we want to store that, that file. I'll go ahead and just dump it into the desktop. And once that's done loading, our VS Code editor reopens. And let's close the welcome tab. And we'll see on the left hand side that we now have our project structure set up for us with a couple files, folders, and all that good stuff. So now what we need to do is we need to jump into our Salesforce org. And we need to jump into uh, setup. And in here, let's search for dev hub. And when we click on it, uh, in, in this case, I've already gone ahead and enabled my dev hub. But if, if it's a new org or if you're working in your sandbox and you never worked with Lightning Web Components, it's probably disabled. So go ahead and, ena and enable that. Uh, once you have that enabled, uh, we're now able to create and uh, manage scratch orgs. So let's go back to our VS Code. And the next thing we want to do is again hit um, Control Shift P on the keyboard. And this time we want to type in authorize org if you have not done so done so already. Um, in my case, actually, I'll, I'll just follow follow along that way. You guys can follow, follow it along. Um, but um, very quickly before I do that, I did want to point out if in the in the past you have already connected to an org on the bottom left hand corner right here, you can click on this and it'll show you all the different uh, orgs that you're connected to. I know in my case, I this is the one that I'm going to be using, uh, but I'll go ahead and just do it from scratch. That way you guys can follow along. So let's go ahead and click, click on authorize an org and we'll just choose project default and we can give this a name. Um, in this case, I'll just leave it as VS code org. You guys can name it whatever you want. Uh, if we give it a few seconds after it's done, we should see that we will get a browser prompt um, to log into our org. Uh, like this and all you have to do is just simply log in to your org uh, once you click on login and once you authorize it you'll see that it, it just logs you into your org and if you minimize the browser you'll see on the lower right hand corner that we were successfully able to authorize our org so with that done um, we can go ahead and again once again hit Control shift p to open up the command palette and we can type in create a default scratch org right here uh, when we click on this, it's going to ask if we have a definition file. Uh, for now, let's not worry too much about it. So just use the, the project scratch, the, the one that, that's already in the system. And it's going to ask us to enter an org alias or use the, the default. I'm just going to click on enter. And then it's going to ask us for how many days we want to have that, that scratch org. And kind of to explain what a scratch org is, it's basically a temporary developer environment that allows you to basically you know spin up this environment and you can kind of have a lightning web components or other code in it and you know once you're done working with it then you can kind of you know push it into your into a sandbox or your production environment 
So it, it, it allows you to have like your own development environment, essentially. So I'm, I'm going to just leave it at default for seven days. That's fun. And once that's done running, you'll see in the lower right hand corner that create a default scratch org successfully ran. So with that done, uh, we've basically enabled the dev hub. We've authorized our org and we've created the default scratch org. Um, the last step to that is to create basically start up the local development server, which uh, will allow us to basically preview of uh, the code that we're that we're writing all in our computer without actually having to send you know deploy that code into our environment into our org organization so um let's write in start development server right here now a quick warning um i don't know if this issue happens on mac computers or linux computers but i do know in windows computers if you were to run this without uh basically uh, installing the LDVC dev server um, plugin, which for some reason it wasn't included as part of all the other setup that we did in the previous um, in the previous video, you'll get an error. And the error looks something like this. So you'll see um, on, on the bottom right here, uh, it says warning, this is not an SFDX command. Did you mean to run that? And then at the bottom, it just says basically install the plugin yourself. So like I said, for some reason, um, the plugin isn't installed as part of, you know, the, the broader installation that we did in the previous uh, video, but um, I, I'll, I'll walk you guys through that right now. That way we can get that done. So the first thing you'll need to do is, again, like I said, I don't know if this issue happens on other types of computers that aren't Windows based, but if you are on Windows, all you'll need to do is go to uh, nodejs.org and download the Node.js uh, software. Once that's installed, you'll need to, once that's done, you'll need to go to your hard drive. Uh, you click into the hard drive and then click in, into users, then your user, which in this case, it's just my name. Uh, you'll look for your name and after that, we need to uh, do go to view right here on the top right hand corner, and we need to check this box hidden items. Uh, when you do that, you'll see this folder called app data, which is a hidden folder. Click into that, and then we're going to click into local, and then lastly, you will click into fs ff sfdx. In here, you'll see a bunch of files. Um, and it's unlikely that that file will exist because you haven't done the setup yet. But if you do happen to see this file right here, yarn.lock, go ahead and delete it. If you haven't done the rest of the setup. Um, it, like I said, it's very unlikely that file will be, be there. But if you're trying to set, up, set this up for the, for, for the first time and you don't delete this file, you'll probably have an error further down the road. So go ahead and delete that delete that in the unlikely case that you do have it. Okay, so that's step two. Uh, the next thing you need to do is uh, open up PowerShell and uh, run it as an administrator. And I'll, I'll leave these commands down in the description box below, but you'll need to uh, run npm install. So that's basically utilizing the npm package we installed earlier. So npm install dash dash two dashes global space windows build tools. Uh, I have already run this, so I'm not going to do it again. But basically, this is going to install Python 2.7 and this thing called build tools. Um, so go ahead and click enter. It'll take a few minutes to run. Once that's done, once that's done, it'll tell you, I think it's like success or it's package installed or something. Uh, so once that's done, you can go ahead and close the PowerShell and then back in your browser, you're going to want to go to python.org and you'll want to download Python, the, basically the, the newest version 3.9.6. Uh, normally you wouldn't have to install this because uh, as I said in the previous step, um, in the command terminal, you basically install Python 2.7, but for some reason you, you still get an error message if you don't install Python 3.9. The, basically the, the latest iteration of Python. So go ahead and download and install that. 
Um, I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it myself. But download that. Once that's done, we want to verify that basically everything we've installed is, is, is correct. And we also need to move some files. So back into our, our hard drive, we want to go to... Uh, well, first, before we, we do anything, you'll see here that when I went into my hard drive, at the bottom we have this the Python and the Python log um, files. Uh, that's because I've moved it here. And for some reason, this software needs it to, to be at the base root of our hard drive. So if it's not there, we're going to have to move it ourselves. So basically, let's go ahead and go into users and then go into our, our own user. So that, that will be your name, most likely. And then once you're in there, uh, we want to go to where it says Windows Build Tools. And in here, you'll see a, f a file for um, um, Python and the Python log. So basically, you'll want to move those from, from this folder to the, the, the base root, which is your, your, your hard drive. As you can see here, if I move back, it's just these two folders, or these two files, rather. You want to move them here to the base root. Uh, you can leave the other... Uh, file. So let's go back here. You can leave this there. Um, that it, I, I think it actually you have to leave it there, or else you might get an error as well. So um, that's basically setting up to where um, whenever we run our local development server, there's like some Python packages that need to run, um, and it looks for the Python software here. And if it doesn't find it, you'll get an error message. So. By having it there, we can avoid that error message. And one, one last thing, if we go back into our users here and back in here, if you don't see this file here for some reason, you'll basically need to rerun the, the um, npm install uh, Windows build tools or else, again, you'll get an, uh, another error message. And I'll leave this step-by-step -step, uh, guide in the description box below in case uh, my rambling doesn't really make much sense to you. Uh, it might be easier for you just to follow those steps. Okay, so once we have all of that done, we, let's go back to our PowerShell and then run as administrator one more time. Click yes. And here we need to run another command. This command is npm install with the dash g for global, no gyp. I believe it's like a build tool uh, for more uh, for other add-ons that might exist in Node. Uh, I can't quite remember. But uh, what I do know is that it is required for this. So go ahead and type this out and then click enter. Let it finish installing. Once it's done installing, then you can basically close this out. Or actually, I lied. <laughs> Once that's done installing, you want to hit um, or type in sfdx plugins um, colon install at salesforce dash lwc. Uh, dash dev dash server if you click enter on that uh, it's going to take a few seconds but it's basically telling the sfdx um module that we installed in the last server or sorry in the last video to basically install this package that we need to actually be able to run the code that we write in our own computer um and i've already installed it so this is kind of pointless for me to install um, but this is basically the command that the error message would give you if we hadn't followed any of the steps that it provided. Uh, so once it's done installing, you'll see here it installed. That's the current version that it exists. The years might be a little different depending on the time you, that you watched this video. But once that is all done, we can finally go back to our VS code and then we can hit on the keyboard control shift P. And we can click on this command or either type it out, start local development server. So when we do that, you'll see in the lower right hand corner that the command is running. So if we give it a few seconds, you'll see in our output that something's happening here uh, It is starting the LWC local development. And after a few seconds, you'll see that in our browser, it automatically opened up another tab. And we now have this local development server that we can use to test our code. So, uh, I know it's kind of a, a bit more of a technical video and my explanation might not have been the best, but with this, we can finally begin to build Lightning Web Components. And that will be the next video that I create. So I think that's pretty much it. We'll stop here. In the next video, I'll go ahead and actually 
demonstrate the, <laughs> the creation of a lightning web component and we'll kind of you know put everything together that we've kind of thus far um installed on our computer so you can kind of see how this all works together so um i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching